June year six. I hope you're well and have had a good day so far doing your English editing and your spellings, I hope, and some lovely work on algebra. Today in French, we are thinking about celebrations and how we learn the name of those celebrations. To be successful in today's session, we are going to revisit some key phonic sounds. So we're going to look at the sounds um, that we uh, need to use to make and uh, correctly pronounce uh, certain French words. We're going to learn the names of some celebrations. We're going to develop an understanding of one of the key celebrations within the French calendar, which is on the 14th of July. So we're going to look at the history around that. And we're going to also practice saying the names of the celebration. Now, as with last week, guys, this comes with a significant health warning of Mr. Spring hasn't learned French for 23 years. So many of you will have access to people at home who have more proficiency at saying some of the words in a French accent. So if I say it incorrectly or you're not sure how I've said it and you know a brother or sister and mum or a dad at home has a clearer pronunciation, please ask them to repeat it or maybe even see if you can go on Google Translate to see how it's correctly pronounced. I will do my very best though, year six. Okay, guys, so just a little bit of practice to begin with. These 12 months that we looked at last year, 12 months, standard year, Okay, so we've got January all the way to December. So could you please see if you can remember, first of all, how do we say what month is it? Okay, so how do we say what month it is? So, sorry, we'll do that one secondly. First of all, we're going to look at the 12 months. So how do we say January? Say it. Janvier. 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 Okay, hopefully you said that correctly. How do we say February? February. Every year. Okay, lovely job. Saying it in response, guys, I know it's going to make you feel daft, but do it to the computer because otherwise you're not practicing it at all. Okay. Um, third month of the year is Mars. Mars. Okay. Fourth month of the year is Avril. Avril. Okay. Fifth month of the year, it's quick, short one, May. May. Okay. Sixth month of the year, June. June. Seventh month of the year, Juillet, Juillet, Juillet. It almost sounds like something a little bit rude within the middle of it. Okay, it's not quite, but that's how I'm trying to remember the pronunciation of it. Juillet. Okay. Not oot, but oot, 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 oot. Okay. Stop tomble. Try for the 10th month of the year. How do we say October? October. Try for the 11th month of the year? November. And for the 12th month of the year, try and say it loudly. December. Okay. And then to ask what month it is, we would say, yeah, we'd say, c'est quel mois, c'est quel mois. Repeat, please. C'est quel mois, c'est quel mois. Okay. And to say it is, we'd say, c'est, c'est. That's the, uh, the contraction of it and is in French. Okay. It and is in French is contracted to the set. Okay. Right, guys. We've got to remind ourselves of certain sounds. We've got to remind ourselves of certain sounds. Now, the first one is this one, which is the uh, guys, the clowns making it. So, can you remember what the grapheme would look like? Okay. Not quite sure. So, this is en, en. So, there's three graphemes that go over it. We've got en, en. And on. Now, guys, get your count, count, count. Press the button. Ready? So there you go. On, 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 on. Okay, next one, guys. We've got the lady. Um, we're assuming she might be in somewhere such as Spain where she's doing this kind of special dance. Can we remember the sound that goes with her? Okay, and the graphic that goes with that is. Okie dokie, guys. Next one. We've got somebody found something nasty on their shoe. What noise is she going to make? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, and the grapheme is uh, E U. Uh, uh. Okay, now we've got this big cheesy grin. Kyron's just got 10 out of 10 on a master test, test, so it's looking like this, and the sound is E, 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 E. Big smiles. E, 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 E. Lovely job. Guys, you might feel silly. Imagine how silly I feel. My, my window's there. People are looking at me. Okie dokie. Next, guys, we've got the geese. What noise does that geese make? Okay, that phoneme, sorry, the graphic phoneme, should I say, for the geese's sound is? Eh, 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 eh. Really, really annoyed sound. Eh, eh, eh. Okay, and the uh, grapheme is eh, 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 eh. Okay, next one, we've got this wailing baby. We have these in our house. I'm sure many of you do at home as well. So the wailing sound of an upset child is... Wah, 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 wah. Okie dokie, see if you can 
correctly spell that grapheme of an O and an I. Wah, wah, wah. Everybody's saying wah, wah, wah. Next one. We've got our monkey friend and he's making the noise of... Ooh, 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 ooh. And the correct grapheme for that is O and a U. O and a U. Ooh, ooh. Okay, guys. We need you to revisit those phonemes and graphemes due to the fact they can... They, uh, they um... Uh, con they, they're contained within these five, sorry, these uh, eight uh, celebrations. So the first one we've got is La Chandelle, La, ch la, ch la Chandelle, okay, so La Chandelle, okay. La Chandelle. The second one we've got is Le saint Valentin. Now you might be able to guess that's a cognate, so it looks quite similar to a word which is in English as well, or a celebration we have in February in English where you're all going to give me chocolates. Because we're not at school that week, you won't be able to now. So maybe you send me cards. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks. Okay. Le Saint Valentin. Le Saint Valentin. Le Saint Valentin. Okay. And then we've got an eggy celebration coming up, which is Le Pack. Le Pack. Le Pack. Then we've got the special celebration, which is unique to France. So it's a special celebration just for France due to their history, which we'll look at in a little bit, which is Le 14 Juillet. Then we've got Le Jour de Souvenir. We've got Le Noël, Le Noël, Le Noël, which is when we might see a guy with a, a big white beard, a red and white hat, big belly. You recognize the guy. Then we've got the New Year, which is Le Nouvel An. And finally, we've got Le Poisson d'Avril, okay? Le Poisson d'Avril, which is when some of you might be playing jokes on people. If we're back at school, which we very much hope will be, that will be the day where Mr. Springs is his funniest, okay? The first day in April. What's that special day? Ah, yeah, April Fool's Day. Okay, guys, now, there's a special thing about how we pronounce one of these, or a, 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 an element within our phonetic, phonetical knowledge that we haven't got so far. Now, Le Noël is the Christmas day in, in French. Um, if you look at those dots above the E within Le Noël, um, they're called a tremor, okay? Tremor, it's almost like wobbling. And they, they remind us that this, you've got to separate the U uh and the E, eh, okay? So it's not no, it's Noël, Noël, okay? So it's those two sounds need to be separated, the O uh and the E, eh. Noël, Noël, okay? Le Noël. Okay, guys, right, that's just going over them. Um, and we're going to have a look at them now. So hopefully we can figure out what they are. So what's this special celebration? La Chandelle. It's a very important one. Yeah, it's Pancake Day. La Chandelle. We call it Shrove Tuesday sometimes if we're thinking about the derivation of it from the Christian calendar. Um, La Chandelle. Now, this is the one where I know that Tyreek's desperately saving up his money to get Mr. Spring some chocolates for the 14th of July because it is Le saint Valentin. Le San Valentin. Okay, I'll just listen to the pronunciation of that one again, because Mr. Springer's question is pronunciation, and then I'll try and repeat it. Le San Valentin. Okay, so it's quite long. long. Le San Valentin. Le San Valentin. Try and say it. Thanks, guys. Give it a go. Give it a go. Thank you. Uh, now, we've got the idea. Le jour de souvenir, okay? So this is when we remember days, uh, in, it's a commemorative day. So if you think about our work on World War One, we've looked at, at the idea that the war ends on, uh, or ended uh, in November 1918, and still today, uh, every year, on the 11th of November, people celebrate, or sorry, commemorate the loss of lives that went with the war. And le jour, the day of, of remembrance, le jour du souvenir, is similar to that where we remember. And you'll see within souvenir, when we go to somewhere and we buy something, when we bring it back, we call it a souvenir. So le jour, the day, de souvenir, de sou of, of remembrance. So when we're bringing something back from somewhere, we're remembering that place. Now the next one, le Noël, we know that one, Christmas, le Noël, le Noël, okay? And it's interesting, some people whose birthday is Christmas Day are called Noël as a way of rep uh, representing uh, that, that that's the day of their birth. Le Nouvel An, so the 1st of January, the new year. Well done. Le Nouvel An, an An, an sorry, I'm going to just double check that my pronunciation there. 
le nouvel an, OK, en there, it means year, OK, and le poisson d'avril, and this is due to the fact that the 1st of April um, in, in uh, France, not only do people play jokes, but they also have games where you have to try and stick a fish to somebody's back. It's a very strange tradition, and um, my family in the past have had um, people from France staying with us in, in, at, at the beginning of April, and I didn't understand. I was about 10, and I didn't understand why they were trying to stick f fish to my back. I just thought it was really weird, which it is, but it's a tradition in France. Try and stick a frisk to somebody on the first of eight. Okay, now, 14th of July, as I say, um, it's, it's called Bastille Day, and it's um, in France 300 years ago. The, the ruling class were the a clergy um, at the top of the class um, with the nobles, and uh, the king was really greedy he was in charge of everything it was called le roi um and he was really spoiled he's absolute ruler he didn't listen to democracy there was no sense of uh, people getting to choose things and he was very selfish some people below him the nobles and the clergy got were very rich so they were happy enough but the commoners lots of people were really poor they had to pay lots of tax to the uh king and it meant that they they were very unhappy eventually um so in 1789, what's that? 231 years ago, the harvest was bad, so people were we, we people were already unhappy and hungry, and they became hungrier. They became poorer. They needed some help, and he didn't help them. His wife, so the country was really poor because he'd spent loads of money on uh, fancy things, extravagant things, and he decided he needed more money to buy his fancy things. So he asked the commoners, the people who didn't have much money, he asked them for more money, and that tipped them over the edge. And as a result of that, they um, were campaigning against it and they were protesting against it and they were sent to somewhere called the La Bastille Saint-Antoine and when they were in La Bastille Saint-Antoine they were hungrier and angrier and fed up and fed up and then on the 14th of July that's why it's the celebration um, they got hungry they're angry and they they broke out sorry they broke into the prison set people broke into the prison set the prisoners free and stole the weapons they killed the guards the officers and it's called the storm in the Bastille because they stormed it, they overtook it. Although, actually, there was only seven people there, so it wasn't lots of people who were freed. But it was about overthrowing the order of the government. Um, try and uh, the queen, La Reine, Marie Antoinette, who's an Austrian princess, she heard about them and she was she didn't know why they were angry, which shows how out of touch she was. She told them if they were hungry, they should eat cake. Or well, that's, that's maybe apocryphal. People aren't sure if she really said that. They didn't have cake either, so it showed that she was so out of touch with them. Just because she didn't have bread, surely you have cake, she thought, but they didn't have either. Okay, but it shows how out of touch with how privileged she was, and that they didn't understand her suffering. So eventually, the king wouldn't accept it, um, and he wouldn't let people uh, rule. He said, no, 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 so no, no, no. And eventually then, he, he was overthrown. He declared France a republic, so ruled by the people. They had a motto of liberty, fraternity, and equality, so freedom, brotherhood, and equality. Um, and they took land uh, from the nobles, similar to how um, other revolutions have done it over the past. Um, they, they made the flag, the tricolor, so one, two, three, tricolor, three colors, um, the tricolor black drapo, um, to show that they are proud. That's a new flag for them. Okay, And they put the cap on to show that they were common people. Okay. They made things that they took from the stones of the uh, uh, Bastille. And then lots of rich people, so lots of the upper class and the clergy and the nobles were executed because they were called enemies of the people. And then eventually uh, the king and queen tried to flee, tried to get away, but they were forced to return. And eventually they were arrested and executed. Okay. Um, so four years after the revolution in 1793, the king's head was chopped off because he was executed. And this is the machine, which is the killing machine, which chopped people's heads off. It's called a guillotine, very unpleasant bit of equipment. Okay, lots of people watched that death. Um, and then that meant that eventually now the revolution was complete. And now to celebrate the storm in the Bastille, where they overthrew the established order. Uh, Bastille Day, people dress up with their tricklers on their faces and they sing the... the uh, national anthem, the La Masse Allais, which I am not going to sing for you, but you can maybe uh, find out about it. Um, and they, 100, 100 years after the storming of the Bastille, they commemorated that by building the big Eiffel Tower, uh, which was therefore built in 1889, okay, to celebrate the 100th anniversary. And that's that image, which uh, is Marianne, who is uh, the image of the French Revolution. Okay, so that's just to remember those. Now, uh, this eggy celebration is Le Pac, Le Pac, Le Pac. And finally, we've got the 14th of July, which is Le 14 uh, Juillet, Le 14 Juillet.